once again. Now the table talk quieted yeah, down. Andy up 7,100. Marco up 4,500. Chris up 1,600. Garrett down Some about 3,000. James down 3,500. And Julie Yorn is down 6,850. Three bet in progress with 10 4 off suit. It's going to be another spicy hand between these two players. Garrett's going to bet 1500 here. About half the size of the pot. I assume this is going to go check, check on this turn. But I'm not sure. Garrett with 10 4 might want to apply even more pressure since he's already played his hand really aggressively. And he does, he bets pot again. Eighteen thousand two hundred in the pot, and the front door flush has rolled off. And he does have the Queen of Hearts in hand. Garrett just got one bluff through with the A seven earlier. First Andy. All in. Wow. Garrett puts Andy all in for 38,000. Garrett with 10 4 off suit must have picked up some sort of live read on Andy and decides to go for it. Andy's brain is now in the blender trying to put this puzzle together. Garrett is telling the story that he has a flush or something like top set. But Andy does block both of them. Andy has removal to top set and the flush. Garrett might also be saying that he has something like pocket jacks as well. So Garrett is mainly repping a flush here. Garrett's telling the story, I have the nut flush, I have ace king of hearts, <coughs> or ace five of hearts, ace ten of hearts, something that maybe had a straight draw, flush draw, now gets there. This is just so sick. And the fact that Andy is thinking this long is pretty sick as well. These players have played so much poker against each other. Garrett just bet mainly 2x the size of the pot. around 18,000 in there and he has 38,000 in his stack oh, I think Andy's going to fold it looks like he's going to give it up and once again those time chips are worth a minute Andy's hand does have some good removal, but is it good enough removal? There's a lot of leveling going on between these two players.
What do you guys think in the chat? One call, two fold. Look at Garrett's pulse racing there on his neck. I'm sure it's pulsing though pretty heavily when he does have it. So that's not a reliable sense. Just mentioning that he did get his heart beat up a little bit there. One in the chat if he's going to call two fold. One call, two fold. Let's see what y'all think in the chat. Sick that Andy took two minutes to think about that one, and Garrett gets one through. Ten four off, like a boss, and that is Garrett Adelstein, one of the sickest players around. The legend known as G-Man. Okay, it's on. It's from like three or four years ago or something. Okay. I think it's more. High stakes. It might be five. Seven it's ancient. Yeah. It's high stakes. It's high stakes. They're playing like. And who was the opponent? It was uh, Aussie Matt. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Is that when he bluffed? Oh, yeah, but okay. it's like the sickest bluff ever. Okay. He bluffs for like, it's so insane. And like, yeah, yeah it's, Aussie Matt like bets the flop, but we'll just call the king high and then, or queen high or whatever. Yeah. And then Aussie Matt bets with two the top, we'll Julia with about like 4,800 in her stack and she's going to make yeah. call it's here like they put in 10 so suited. Much money for you. <laughs> yeah, he's she's quite shallow, player. but she does oh, have yeah, position on Garrett. <laughs> he's probably the best ever. <laughs> oh, many people say he's the best who's ever done it at like live poker or whatever. In this Seriously? Game. Mm. It's pretty like well regarded, yeah. Let's really? <laughs> <laughs> just go check checks since there is an ace on the flop. Um, this has happened a few times today yeah, when these players have had kings and ace on the no, flop slows down off. the action. Yeah. Julie picks up a 10 and now she's going to be doing some bidding here. <laughs> Actually, another great one is because so he, Andrew Robles stakes JLB like the very public. She goes all in. And uh, and Helmuth kept Helmuth kept tell, every time JLB would make a bad play, Helmuth would go to Robles and go, "You stake that guy." <laughs> Just incredible. Garrett's wondering how often does Julie check back an ace here on the flop? How often could she have something like Queen Jack or King Queen or something of ten? Three bet, two jacks, and Chris has my favorite hand, two eights. We're going to see some money sprinkled in this pot since both players have over pairs. an interesting spot for Chris. I could see him flatting her or putting in a protection raise. Like 2200 He does make the flat call. And this turn should go check check a bunch. I've seen Chris get very creative in these spots. The million dollar cash game, you got a player to fold pocket queens in a spot like this. And Chris is going to rep a flush or a straight here with the eight of clubs in his hand. He can rep seven, eight. He can also rep flushes as well. Marco with an over pair and a jack of clubs in his hand is also going to continue. Oh. And a straight flush for Chris. And now Chris is really going to be targeting those over pairs with the club in them. Slow played, big flush. Nine thousand in the pot. See what precision. Just you can just lift your hand. You don't have to 
count it. More than that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Chris does bet seven thousand. Tough spot here for Marco. Marco does have to risk seven thousand to win sixteen thousand, which means as long as he's good here, something like thirty percent of the time, it's profitable. He's getting a little bit better of two to one odds, and those time chips are worth. Each one minute extra, these players have 30 seconds to act on every street. And you start with five time chips, one per hour. So Mark just extended his time bank for another minute. It's a pretty tough spot since I know Chris and he's capable of big bluffs. <coughs> And a good fold by Marco, pretty solid. Oh, okay, sure. No, sorry. Oh, sorry. Both players with trips and a chop pot. And Garrett hands the time chip. We see Marco did raise the flop. So Garrett is worried that he has a flush draw that got there or a full house. and Garrett are going to go to battle with the same hand but a different suit. Garrett just says half the size of the pot is what my bet is going to be. And Ante raises it up to 3,800 with this backdoor flush draw. These two players have played a lot of hours against each other. Wow, and Garrett calls with just ace high backdoor flush draw. We're gonna see some blood, because when Garrett makes that call, it means he's gonna go for it at some time in this hand. This goes check, check. Garrett 
here. It does have removal to ace queen and ace queen of hearts. He does have a little bit of showdown value with his ace high. I think Geert's going to go for this one here. And he bets a third of the pot. Sorry, he bets the size of the pot. Hot size bet here for Garrett. Garrett's trying to tell the story that he has something like Queen Jack suited, King Queen, or Ace Queen full house, and Garrett gets the job done. I knew there would be some fireworks once Garrett makes that float. Oh, he was, they were already for sure cheating. Like, those yeah. clips of, like, it all started with, it's also crazy, like, how it evolved. It started with them, they were stealing signs, and they would hit a trash can. And, like, you can see, yeah. you watch games that you can heal the trash can getting banged. And then they just kept find they kept getting caught and finding new ways to do it. And then they said the Nationals knew it was an issue, because, like, you know, inside or whatever. So the Nationals have made, like, an insanely complex system in the World Series to not have the signs stolen. Yeah. Garrett with two kings and gets two callers. Wow, this is pretty interesting, actually. Garrett did not three bet this hand. He just flatted it from the cutoff. Garrett with the king of spades, so she, he's not going to be too worried if spades or as worried when a spade, if it hit the Turner River, and there it is, since he does have removal to flushes. This hand is pretty sick. You don't see Garrett slow playing big pairs very much pre-flop. I wonder if he felt like someone might be squeezing behind him. Chris checks the nuts over to Garrett. Garrett making sure he has that king of spades. $7,000 in the pot. And we're going to see Chris put in a huge raise here. He might even just hit all in button. Chris with the nut flush. Chris would prefer to have something like the five of spades, ace five of spades, or ace four of spades in his hand so that he doesn't block the jack of spades, giving Garrett some better flushes. Interested in seeing what sizing Chris, and he does say all in. And Garrett is a little irritated. He knows that this slow play might have cost him, but we can see the hands. Garrett three bets pre-flop. Chris is not folding. Chris is going to win this pot either way. Let's see if Garrett can get away from this hand. Chris essentially shoved the river for 400 big blinds or 380 big blinds-ish. Chris's stack is correct, and it looks like it is of 38,000. Garrett has to risk his 38,000 to win 50,000. 
which means he has to be good here. Something like Maybe 40% of the time, and Garrett gives it up. A little bit of frustration out of Garrett. We don't see that often. 